and welcome back to another episode of your favourite podcast, Boys Gone Wild. I am joined here today with my co-host, uh, Andrew Cohen. Today um, is the anniversary of 9-11. It is. And um, my cousin <laughs> um, often marks these occasions with strange poems. Sure. He, he likes to mark any occasion with a poem. Yeah. Um, but he decided to do it yesterday. Um, so he kind of wrote, I suppose it's a poem. He wrote it himself. He's made a few appearances on this podcast before. Um, but he's kind of come back into action, which is fun. So he wrote this poem, and then one of my other cousins commented, it was yesterday, which is the day before 9-11, one of my cousins commented, um, it's the 10th today, mate, to which he replied saying, I know, mate, this post is about the night before. So here we go. Yep. On this day, 23 years ago, 246 people went to sleep in preparation for their morning flights. 2,606 people went to sleep in preparation for work in the morning. <laughs> 343 firefighters went to sleep in preparation for their morning shift. 60 police officers went to sleep in preparation for their morning patrol. Eight paramedics went to sleep in preparation for their morning shift. None of them saw past 10 a.m. September the 11th, 2001. In one single moment, life may never be the same. As you live and enjoy the breaths you take today and tonight, before you go to sleep, in preparation for your life tomorrow, kiss the ones you love. Snuggle a little bit tighter and never take one second of your life for granted. Hashtag we will never forget. Wow. Uh, yeah. That was incredibly moving from Simon. Is that, is that a Simon Cohen original? Yeah. I mean, I've never seen a poem include so many statistics. <laughs> yeah. So. I feel, especially when he hit 60 police officers, that's when I think yeah. radically maybe lose. I yeah. you, you've made your, your point. I don't know if... The numbers become... <laughs> they merge into one. Yeah. It's it, too much. If I was being critical, I'd say maybe... Yeah. Don't have 80% of the poem listing statistics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, get the feelings in there. But I mean, yeah. <sighs> I mean, what is original about it, which I appreciate, is the focus on 9 11's Eve. Yeah. As being the kind of main kind of emotional part of the story. I like that. You yeah. Know? It's the like an, there's an arc, Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and all the world was gentle. <laughs> not a soul was awake. <laughs> For they did not know the terror that would come tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, no one's ever really focused on it. And I think, because yeah. he's one of those Facebook posters and God love him for it, but he's mm. one of those ones, you know, he's still, his main outlet is Facebook. Cause he's this is coming out two days after 9-11, by the way. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah. Just yeah. Let, we, well, let, we haven't got the date wrong, by the way, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lest we forget. Um, but he's still one of those people that puts everything on Facebook. And I don't know, I quite like having a different poem to mark occasions that you didn't know were occasions, such yeah. as 9-11 Eve. Yeah, it's funny that One someone... One more sleep. Someone... <laughs> <laughs> well, we, talk, we were talking about this last night. We were talking maybe another edition of Horatio Shit Tweets. Oh, um, yeah. Well, it's... Which hasn't really resurfaced. I only really post kind of content on there. I don't, yeah. I'm not really getting my kind of... Well, it's whenever... Quips. Often we will... Well, it's not very often. It's once in a blue moon, actually. Yeah. We'll come up with a tweet together and it always does terribly because it's always quite abstract. What was the Christmas one? Chris, no, it wasn't. Oh, it was New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Eve, not New Year's Steve. Mm, I think that's good. That's good stuff. I think that's... And I got 29 likes. Yeah, um, could go worse. But what was this one? It was yesterday, so on 9-11's Eve, just writing one more sleep. Yeah. And well, nothing else. And no context, which I think is great. <laughs> because no one really knew it was the eve before. No one was talking about 9-11. And then they were being, what the fuck does that mean? And then woken up the next day and be like, oh, here we are. I guess that's Do you think people would work it out? No, a few people would go, they'd be, what is he talking about? Yeah. And then enough, I think in a, in a few minds it would stick. So when they wake up and saw the news in the morning, they would go, oh, oh, it's still 9-11. <laughs> the anniversary of 9-11, lest we forget. What is your relationship with 9-11 these days? Um, sparse. <laughs> <laughs> Yours? Uh, I haven't gone on a 911 <laughs> deep dive for a bit. I mean, you. you I used you, to love it. Yeah, it's one of those ones you, you occasionally just go back and get yeah. fully immersed in it. Was it like? Oh, I wish I remembered it. What? Like, because we were alive. Oh, I, you know, it's just a dramatic, like, you know, God rest in peace. Now, potentially, this is a false memory. I it know, is. That's probably. We. I think we've we've spoke about not on the podcast, but we've spoken about this. So before. we were four. Yeah, you don't four. remember that. Where we going? I Talk believe it was my memory. first memory. Here we fucking go. It was in our kitchen and we had a TV in the kitchen. It was it like an old on. box? No, it interrupted a program. I don't remember what the program was. Of course. To tell us what 9 it was 9-11. Probably Newsnight, knowing you or intellect at well, four. I, I mean, what could I have been watching though? I, I wonder if they- Scooby-Doo, Would they, would they have interrupted Scooby-Doo? <laughs> They're not interrupted. <laughs> Panic! Panic in New York. <laughs> Thousands already confirmed dead. There's a second plane! <laughs> 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 Raggy! Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> that Scooby Doo reacted to the news. Scooby Doo reacts live to it. He reacts live to it. Yeah. What to the animated? Yeah. <laughs> Quickly drawing. <laughs> oh no, Raggy! There's been a terrible mishap. Mishap in New York. And then, then they get to the bottom of the mystery. They go and hunt down Al Qaeda. It and it Laden. turns out it's just. Oh, it's uh, George Bush. It turns out it's just a, it's just two kids standing on top of each other. In a, <laughs> yeah. in and I would have got away with it. It, it wasn't was even kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my first memory too. Actually, what nine eleven? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There must be false. a name for a false memory. I think they're called false memories. No, there's like a, there's probably some pretentious name like the like the Romanoff effect or something. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I do kind of think it was my first memory. I have a hot take on memories. Go for it. I don't think anyone on the planet knows their first memory. You know what the Mandela effect is. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. slightly different. The Mandela effect is where it's like, oh, yeah, I guess it is a false memory, yeah. yeah. But that's slightly different, I think. That's when there's a mass belief that something was something how it's not can you not have a solo Mandela effect? I don't think you can. <laughs> that would be when you uh, just misremember something yeah. and that is that'll be a Nelson the, effect yeah the Nelson <laughs> but no I don't think because I like people talk about it and I'm just like I don't know my first memory of course I fucking don't yeah no no idea imagine trying to untangle that fucking cobweb of terror how, how far back can you remember no idea <laughs> tomorrow what's yeah. the what's, what's tomorrow. the what's the <laughs> I mean, that's someone who really has a bad memory. If they can only remember, remember tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm in a fucking hellscape. Just always like, Where do I, how, what? Um, yeah, no, I've, I think I, my, I, I made one up because people were asking me. Yeah, well, it feels like I've made one up yeah. and then I believed the No, but I just knew, I knew it wasn't my first, I can't remember. What. I can, the best I can do is, because we moved house quite a lot. Mm. I remember one house that I was pretty young in. So I think I would have been like maybe four. Yeah. And I have a vague, vague memory of looking at my sister's collection of step CDs and being like, oh, I wonder what, what that is. What? <laughs> How old are you? Four-ish. Four. Okay, well, that's that's 9-11 time. Yeah, I know, but... Bing bang, that's 9-11 time. Bing bong. <laughs> ding ding. You're in business, baby. I am in business. Yeah. But and I remember the, a house that we only left when I was like five. But that's not going to be my first memory, you know what I mean? Because I'm not even sure that's true. Yeah. And I'm sure there's probably a memory that Somewhere. I loosely have in before. In the wank bank. In the wank bank. <laughs> that's what I do. I don't troll through porn. I just, just go through my past memories. Trying, just, trying to remember that step. Stage. Yeah. What did she, what did Rachel Stevens look like? What was what was she posing like? Um, yeah, no, I don't think anyone can remember it. And I think people who are confident mm. about their first memories are liars. Uh, so when was the last time you went on 9-11 rabbit hole? Seven years ago? Yeah. I, well, because I, it was, it's a, like, you know, it was around the kind of history and politics I was studying. So 9-11 came up yeah. a lot yeah. at uni. What's well, the biggest thing yeah. that's happened on a day? It's yeah. the biggest thing in our lives, which is why I'm a bit sad to not yeah. have been a bit older. But we will Because freak the drama. Pe- yeah, we'll freak people out. If we make it to the, our 90s and the people will tell us that they, they were alive during 9-11. 9-11 and coronavirus. Yeah. Less impressive, though, seeing as it's 20 years different. Yeah, potato, potato. But what would be mad is if we... Diana. If, if we make it to 100, yes, but we weren't alive for it. We, yeah, we, we were. Missed it. Oh, maybe we were. Yeah, we, we were. It was on. She, di- she died. She oh, died just oh. as you were born, pretty much. No, I wasn't there. She, you weren't there? I wasn't there. <laughs> I was still in my mummy's tummy. <laughs> All snuggled up. No, she died. Oh, no, I was there. She died. Ca- no, I was there. She died. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. She died on the 31st. I was born on the 28th. Wow. So it really was a passing of the baton. Yes. The people's princess. <laughs> in, you know, in her stead. Out, like a phoenix from the ashes, you rose. Uh, what is your favourite part of 9-11? What, what, gets you, what gets your goat the most? Uh, the pictures of people jumping off the... That's, the what, that's what's the craziest part for you. Yeah. 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 I guess it's, what? for me, it's no. just... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I remember what mine is. What is yours? You want it's to change the vi- it? It's the video of the second plane going in. Yeah. What when it like twists yeah. it from below? That is fucking nuts. Yeah. It, yeah. I think that's mine. What's yours? Uh, There's Bush being whisper, whisper Bush. That's good. I guess it's just sort of imagining the first per- the person to see the plane from the office window, and God, it's just getting bleaker than mine. Yeah. It's just getting closer and closer. You're like, and you're thinking it can't possibly. It can't. Come on. That's yeah. not. Um. I guess second plane is probably better. I think that's just because you everyone, know, you know everyone's it. already gone home. That's when it goes from yeah. there's been a terrible accident to we're under attack. Yeah. Chills. Yeah. That, what are you, what, of course, we're I under got attack. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah. And obviously this is a tragedy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's the, for the the drama of it. You know, it's, well, it's real no, life crazy yeah. shit. No, I love it's such a tragedy, but because like United States have punished. Yeah, they, they've they've slapped clapped back so hard. It feels yeah. fair game now to talk about it. That's probably true. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, they've they've killed their fair <laughs> share of civilians as well. They've really they? they've gone back. They've they've, yeah. they've really you know. No hands are clean. No. And well, I watched the be? I watched the Michael Moore doc about just it started the kind of Bush did nine eleven yeah ish sort of stuff. Did he? Is he a Bush? No, no, not really. It's more there's a lot of stuff going on. There's it, it was uh like all of the Bin Laden family were allowed to leave the United States. Mm in the coming days after the crash even <laughs> yeah. though it's quite clear that he was involved and so there's a lot of shady stuff with like the Saudi money involved. yeah yeah do you think Bin Laden would have been as powerful if he was called Bin Ladel I don't but he's already got Bin in his name yeah so I do think if he was called like you know Ran Laden okay like Ooh. a cool name like that Van you, Laden you, Van <laughs> Ruth Van Laden <laughs> Schlut van Ladenflut. <laughs> well, so you couldn't do Uten it then. van Schladen. But you would probably, Me. in a parallel universe, if it was Osama van Laden, yeah. you would probably say, do you think it'd be as successful if it's called Osama bin Laden? You'd probably say something <laughs> stupid like that. Well, maybe. And potentially we're Look, living We can in, never rule that out. But we're potentially living in the bin Laden timeline. This is potentially... <laughs> <laughs> this is potentially the parallel universe that broke off when you suggested this in a, you know... Imagine, imagine a world where Osama Van, you the famous com- you guy, completely lost me. <laughs> where, I have you know, not you know gone and fucking Van Laden. About imagine it was called Osama Bin Laden. Right, that's why I've just said this timeline. <laughs> this timeline that we're stuck in now yeah. broke forward. Where it's exactly where, the where same. Where the Netherlands as the, were the real. No, because th- this is now. <laughs> Don't explain this is now to me. You can't. You can't come up with me with this is now. I'm saying you said that to me last night. Main... You said I am me at one point, <laughs> trying I? to explain a point. Yeah, because I was asking. You were just, you were describing two weddings simultaneously. It was it was unclear. <laughs> and you were going like I'm me now, and I was like fuck you. <laughs> do we just try and explain it, or do we need to throw it in the bin? I feel they understand. The bin don't break another timeline off. <laughs> I'll say on, that there's, yeah. there's a main timeline, which is, which the main is timeline. exactly the same as this, yeah. apart from Osama bin Laden's called Osama Van Laden. Yeah. And I believe there's a podcast just like this yeah. where you make a stupid, a stupid joke saying, a man, do you think Juvenile. Osama Van Laden would be as successful as called Osama bin Laden? Yeah. As you said that, as I said it. the fabric of space time broke off. Oh, I see. A new reality formed exactly the same as that one with one change. What's the change? Osama Van Laden's called Osama bin Laden. Right. And that's what we live in now. Right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> the reason I think that's not true is because bin is a pretty classic name yeah. and it's actually you know it's so because it's so classic it's separated from trash cans yeah you know so a bin i'm, I'm okay with what about osama dustbin laden well obviously that's great <laughs> that's you can't do it yeah dustbin doesn't work or osama waste paper basket laden yeah you've, you've not included a bin in there so you're kind of you're moving away a bit osama bread bin laden <laughs> um, I reckon he had such a strength of the summer will. top bins, Laden. Yeah, I think he. I think his his strength of character. <laughs> words, words containing, containing bin. bin. Well, thank God, Charlie. thank God, we've got Charlie back. You need Christ. Yeah, so for my sister's wedding, I got a, a haircut, and Lorenzo was busy. Right. And I told I'd him left not it, to. I had left it too late. I had a very short time that I could get this. And the wasn't so about. it was really it was like it was like an episode of 24 oh, I was about to say the exact same thing Damn. <laughs> about me trying to get this haircut ding, done ding. yeah uh, so I was around Brick Lane I was sort of miming about I found this kind of like and it's probably it's kind of positive racism mm-hmm. uh, there's a mysterious Japanese man mm. called Mukaweke <laughs> I bet there's no way near that um, who He's, he does seem wise, right? Right, yeah. And he is apparently an amazing hairdresser. Who did you... Who, and how, so, do you how do you know? Because I, the wind I, got, whisper I, got, his I name? got recommended it by a friend. Oh, so I was looking back through all of my WhatsApps to find any hairdresser because I'd asked people at other times. Right. So I went to this place and you can do walk it, but he's, he doesn't have a... He only has one website. This is the worst design website of all time. There's no number you can call. Mm. You only email or Instagram DM to try and get a booking. Right. Or you can chance your arm at a walk Or you can write a note and throw it into yes. the air. And it felt like that. And I came in and he, hairdressers in general, in my whole time mm. having haircuts, are, are quite jovial, chatty people. 
that seems to be one of the main remits of the job. Yeah. Very rude, man. Rude? Sort of rude. We well, just didn't want to talk he, why? and pissed off to be doing it. What What? what was going on? What happened? What so, did he say to you? Well, he, he he was a man of very few words, but a lot of the time it was just very short. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, there was just no, there was no pleasantries whatsoever. Right. There was no, hi, how so are you sit doing? Down. I didn't ask me any questions. Did you ask him questions? Like a couple. Did you ask him about like the wisdom of truth? In well, the I wanted and, to, but I yeah. felt, and then I was like, I bet he's gonna be brilliant. But then I was like, is that racist? Is because it I racist don't... to think a Japanese hairdresser would be good at his job? Well, That's an interesting question. Well, it just, it, it, I, I feel like I was, you know, exoticizing him because I... In, yeah. If you were expecting him to use a samurai sword, <laughs> that would be racist. I don't think it's necessarily racist to expect a Japanese man to be good at his... Hair. I, get, I get why I it feels for me, racist. I, I'll tell you why it was racist because I know in my head... I thought he got trained for 45 years by a, a hairdressing master. Yeah, And it took I him a see. long time it's to... It's the backstory. <laughs> it's, it's offensive to think that gay people will be good at cutting hair. Yes. Because there's a stereotype behind that. Because there's not even a stereotype. That. There's not a stereotype behind <laughs> Japanese people cutting hair. But like a There's root, a detail-oriented a, a, thing. A, a Japanese man of few words. It's, yeah. As a white person, it's very easy to project a lot of... Um, Hatred. <laughs> Well, just a, a rich backstory on top yeah, of Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I wonder what he's been through to get to this point. To be cutting hair in Brick Lane. But you imagine it's like like the... Yeah, like the the, the, the montage of training in yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Where it oh, takes Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> well, I've just watched Blue-Eyed Samurai, which is like... Is that good? Anime. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so I imagine like that. This, the whole thing is a backstory about her becoming, like, you know, the best and samurai. A, and it, was there a lot of, like, proverbs about... Of course. Yeah. It was anime. About, like... You know, you must be yeah. water, my friend. She was like trained by a blind blacksmith. Yes, and then, but he has he has great sensory. Yeah. I in imagine. order to become one with the scissors, you must first become one with these shrubs, etc., <laughs> etc. Et but I'd never had a Japanese hairdresser, so it wasn't. I, I was scrabbling to be racist. I think you, you know? might be overthinking it. I think there's a chance you're overthinking this, maybe even slightly. <laughs> uh, and it was only twenty five quid because it was a walk in, cash in hand, cash in hand. Um, Whoops. And to book, it's fifty quid. Um, how and was it, it? Yeah, it was good, but I don't, once again, I, I, was, I was happy with it. I just the whole experience left me thinking it was better because than it he wasn't. Was. He didn't want to talk to you. Yeah, it just made me feel like the well, whole. Did thing. you feel like he was focusing so much on the hair that he had yeah. no time for small talk? Yeah, he, he did there a good go. job. He did a good job, um, but I do think I probably can't afford to keep going to Lorenzo. No, I neither. feel like I can be fun, and it's quite a funny thing. I would to- like us not to go to the same hairdresser. <laughs> I don't. I don't like it. He talks about you. I'm like, I don't. I don't care. I don't want to. T- I don't want to talk about Horatio right now. Can we talk about something else? He doesn't mention. I don't like. Know, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he doesn't. Um, I don't like the fact that we could maybe have similar haircuts. That annoys me. Um, I think it's quite a personal thing, a hairdresser, and I regret ever recommending him to you. So. I hope you can't afford him. I can't afford him, certainly. It's ridiculously expensive, but I'm, I'm trapped now. I mean, it, it's hard to go back to other haircuts, but I guess it's like, it, there's something very funny about being financially ruined by haircuts. Yeah, isn't it? yeah it's sad. It's sad is what it is. Like, spend, it's like, it's like, not on I a roulette table. I can't pay my heating bills, but I look great <laughs> in the cold. Yeah, it's not good. But no, yeah, the, I, I, I'd back you leaving. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. You support it. Are you going to stay? Of course. Yeah, so there's no time to I'm to the end. He's yeah. doing a, he's doing a stash. How job. regularly are you getting your hair cut? Once a month. Once a month. That's, That's not crazy. Yeah, it's not crazy. But it's just financially, that is. Well, it's I always get it as soon as I get my salary so it doesn't feel as expensive. Fine. But I have had, it's justified because of the awful, you go through the podcast, look mm-hmm. through the history of the podcast. You, you spend been... more on hair than girls because girls always go like, I'm spending 250 quid on my hair. I thought you meant you... like me buying girls drinks at clubs and stuff. I was like, <laughs> on no, hooker, I do not. Not on hookers. hookers, yeah. <laughs> I get some really nasty hookers though, so that doesn't, that doesn't count. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 no, I, yeah, I guess I do because, because they, they go only like get it once. quite rarely. Yeah, yeah. And they're always, I'm always like, that's so expensive. Look, but go I'm through like, the my old boy's podcast. spending 70 quid a month. Imagine that's a subscription. I feel really self conscious about my hair now because I was out. <laughs> everyone's everyone's, everyone's good looking, going, that's 70 quid, that piece of. I was out in the rain and I walked here no, in the rain. No, you got good hair, you got good hair. No, but you 70 seen, quid, quid? 70 quid, yes. Maybe. Yes. You know, it's but all about how, how mu- it makes you how, feel. How much are you paying for the lovely experience? None. Really? Just for the hair. I, I love Lorenzo. If it was at like a um, Speedy Barber's... Speedy Barber and it know, came over the same price. Same price. It's but just it, about the hair. But so And they had just as good a hairdresser. It's a £70 like, haircut. You know. 
just as good a hairdresser. Because what I love about it is the experience. I don't love the experience. I, I way prefer to get in and out. I don't like haircuts. They annoy me. It's not the experience. Often, I decline the drinks. He offers me a head massage. No, thank you. You stopped taking that. I, uh, I didn't ever 70... take it. He's a pal. Now, we're basically boys now. I've gone there like seven times. I don't want to do the maths in my head of how much we've already spent there. <laughs> but Someone else will. So, oh, my God. What? Seven times? Yeah. That's, is that a grand? 500 quid. Oh. Is it? Oh. Is that 1,000 pounds, Charlie? <laughs> Fucking hell. Is no. he cutting your brain? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Real good. Um, no, I have... No, we're, we're, fr we're pals. You know, yeah. we, we talk about shit. We talk about girls. Mm -hmm. We talk about dates. We talk about Italy. He's just Italian. But then I'm not like... It's like me... It's like, it's like, like asking a pal... To say, when he's washing your hair, I think the washing is already unnecessary. But he's mm. like, would you like a head massage? He's not Russian. But... In my view, when I spend that much on a haircut, it's the whole shindig. I'm getting the Prosecco. I'm getting as many coffees you get the as possible. Yeah, I'm yeah. mid-work, so I, I have got a coffee. I have got a coffee before. Um, and but... yeah, I just treat it as an hour. Yeah, and know, I would. If... Of me time. You know what I'm like? I can't, <laughs> I can't enjoy pampering in that level. I thought I couldn't. I would pay more until I to, met Lorenzo. If I had to have a head massage, I'd pay five pounds extra to not have the head massage. The haircut served me well. I, I'm gonna. I'm in between hairdressers now. I don't know if I'll go back. There's a chance I will. Before maybe a bigger, a big match, a big occasion. Maybe I'll. You'll go back to Lorenzo. Maybe or maybe for like nah. uh, like a treat. Or is that not really how? I, that doesn't track. You don't. You've got to build so. a relationship with a hairdresser. Yeah, it's because true. you want to be like, like it's, it's only he's he's killed it the last two times because he knows now we've got to a place of mutual communication. Yeah, because you go, I want this, and they go, well, you can't do that because you've got this hair, and yeah. then you go, well, can I do this? And we go, well, how about this? And yeah. then they know you. They well, talk I, to you about. I'm things. just going to go in with a laminated picture of David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> or just saying all those hairdressers just point to that one, please, with the fucking sticky First up. First one. That. We'll take it. Number seven, please. <laughs> yeah, I, those are fucking hilarious. Yeah. Because they're always so outdated. The haircuts that they've... On those barbers yeah. that they've got it, it's like there's no modern hairstyles there. It's yeah. all like... Everything's just sharp lines and really razor cut stuff. I'm a boy. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> look at my sharp hair. It's just normally just like six normal dudes, David Beckham and yeah. Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. Ronaldo is yeah, it's football players, really. I had a I had a big moment, um, which you're <sighs> I did my first ever text in to LBC. Did you <laughs> <laughs> So I can read it out. Yeah. I just felt compelled for some reason. I have no idea why. It wasn't mm. a topic I particularly cared about. Yeah. But it was also just to test it out. Because mm. I often listen to LBC in the morning when I start work. Nick mm. Ferrari. Mm. Um, you know, I disagree with him on a lot of things, but <laughs> <laughs> we can find some common ground. That's okay. I turn off for James O'Brien. He's insufferable. Still. Because I agree with him the most, but the way he presents yeah. it, I, I can't agree yeah. with. It makes me want to be more right wing. Sure. And um, do, does is James O'Brien come on during your LBC listening time? I turn off when he comes on. Sure. I think he comes on at <laughs> 11, yeah. Like a right-wing grouch. you a big LBC fan? You're listening okay. to Ferrari, it's like, this yeah. is brilliant. James oh, this like, oh, left-wing <laughs> test pop, coming in with his nonsense again. <laughs> off he goes. No, he's just such a, he's just the worst man I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. The more I hear him, the more I've just can't. He's Hitler. I, I despise him. He is Gaddafi. <laughs> So they were having a, a the debate is why am I getting involved? One, I kind of wanted to see, because I'm going to do more now, yeah. just because uh, the chance of being read out, because then I can record it and then we can all listen to mm. it being like, Andrew from Mile End has said this. For some reason, I decided to text in for this debate. They were debating about, um, I think a couple of school children had had been sent home because their hair was dyed or something. So there was a big debate about whether, you know, rules... Did you suggest Lorenzo has a great Yeah, option. I said, well, the thing is, there's a great barber. <laughs> Um, wrong end of the country but I was saying it was about it was it was like you know rules are rules they were cool as coming and going rules are rules are rules and they're there you know they're there for a reason you've got to abide by the yep. rules and that was what Nick was saying it was like rules are rules rules are rules and I said and, you, and usually you agree with Nick no I don't <laughs> it's, it's a answer, but... yeah, no, no I, I don't, don't. <laughs> I said thus we're not debating whether rules should be adhered to at school, because of course that's a yes. We're debating the rule itself. 
Um, and these rules are, are unnecessary. Brackets, of course, hell, they, was, they were saying that hair colour was distracting other students. So I was like, shut. And Nick Ferrari was saying that. I yeah. was like, you're a seasoned broadcaster. Mm. Don't be saying that blue hair means that people can't focus in maths. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I went, of course, hair colour doesn't distract and limit children's self and it limits children's self expression. Dash, Andrew from my land. <laughs> Did it get read out? No. Nope. Oh. That's a shame. Well, I, I I'm going to keep texting. I think you should keep texting. I will keep texting. I think it'll be well, such a thrill. Because we know a producer on the show. I yeah. don't, I, he now, he's kind of moved up, I think. But, Henry. What, you, you, do you think you're going to do some, you know, dirty deals to try and get yeah, your, yeah, your yeah, messages yeah. read out? Yeah. Oh, do you want to come on the show? No. No. I want just one of my messages one to be read out. messages to be read out so I can go, <laughs> yes. Would you ever call in? Nah. Because <laughs> I don't think that's a high bar uh, to get a, be a caller <laughs> in on LBC. Seemingly... It's yeah. almost a, such a low bar, it's quite hard to stick. When you down listen to it level. enough, you realise it's actually the same people calling in. <laughs> there's just a conveyor belt of the same people and they, they know, like Nick will know this one guy. Well, there's probably people who are just exceptional value, right? There's people who are like, yeah. this is this guy's just got, he just shits gold, this this boy. Yeah, I guess I, I, I guess so. It's more He's just like- He's for breakfast because he doesn't, he thinks our fish are too big. Yeah, let's get him on the fucking line. Yeah. That's true to an extent, but it's also just the same people, it's the same people calling in because, and they've just got an opinion on everything. <laughs> And they're, they're clearly, I don't know what they're doing all that time in the morning, but most of their <laughs> most of their attention is dedicated to listening to LBC. I need to get on LBC. It seems everyone's getting on this high. It's a good way to start your morning with a bit yeah. of Ferrari. Well, it's like a coffee, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like it is. slap bang. So I'm, I'm livid about and transgender which is people reading. Yeah, well, <laughs> books to yeah, children, pretty much. It's kind of <laughs> what. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, because as I say, I, I, I'm more aligned with James O'Brien's thoughts, but he's yeah. a knobhead, which is why it's fun to listen to Nick, because I like him, but I disagree with him a lot. So then, but you it's know, quite nice to disagree It's, with a, it's nice to disagree, because yeah. then you can send a text in and see what happens. <laughs> so you never know. Watch well, out. We're going to keep this going, because we could potentially have Andrew's LBC corner, where we try and see... How many texts can, can I we, get in? If we could get sound bites. If we get sound Because we can. I think they're, all available. they're all available retrospectively, aren't they? Great. Yeah, Andrew from Mile End says this. I'm good at, right, I will text about every topic until I get on, essentially. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm bound to get on at some point. Yeah. I just can't be bothered to call. I don't want to, like, actually talk to Nick. I think that'll be, I think I'd crumble. D yeah. I'd crumble under the pressure. My, my sister got married uh, this weekend. Um, and it friend was of the pod. Friend of the pod, Lucia Gould, so sh shout <laughs> out. Um, and it was only my second wedding uh, yeah. I've ever been to. Uh, I had emceeing duties. I had to do a speech. I was very, very nervous for the speech. Um, Were you? Well, because I, what I try to do, because I, as I've seen, hearing other stories of people having speeches at wedding, it does just ruin your entire day until you... Exactly. That's what I don't like. That's what so I, I thought. So I made a, a commitment myself that I was only going to do three hours of stress. So I just didn't think about it till three hours before. Properly. That's a good way to do it. I mean, it. I kind of like, I, I, I wrote it quite last minute. But that's what I, I guess, think about my wedding as well. It's and like, I, it wasn't a proper so speech. Stress. It was on the, the day before. It was a casual one, right? The so wedding it, like the dinner, drinks the before wedding reception the no dinner. no because it was the rehearsal it was, dinner. it was over a weekend the rehearsal dinner that's what it's called is that what it's called? i mean i guess it was this one's i don't know how a fit, traditional this wedding was because well, i've never been to weddings before oh, did you have a rehearsal did you have a dinner the night before the wedding yeah but it was pizza rehearsal out of a van. dinner rehearsal dinner pizza out of a van rehearsal dinner sure. did you do a speech yeah rehearsal dinner um and i guess i was stressed because Everyone's going to think it's, it'll be good because yeah, you've got everyone's pressure. coming up to me saying, Can't you know, wait for this, your speech. This is, probably, this is just like any other day for you, yeah. is it? No, it's not. Actually. No, it's um, really emotional. This is 10 minutes of new material that yeah. I'm trying out here. Uh, I could yeah. very easily bomb. I could ruin the wedding. <laughs> yeah. So I just think that, because I think a lot of people, if they've never done public speaking before, a huge amount of the sweetness is them overcoming that fear to yeah. try and, you know, say something sweet and earnest. Whereas I, I wouldn't be given that kind of credence. The sweetness. I mean? Well, it's just like, you know, you see someone who's never done public speaking before. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. They, they, they stand up, they're yeah. brave just for the, you know. You had the, 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 the yeah. bar was set high. Yeah. But then as soon as I started, I was like, actually, it's the easiest gig. In the <laughs> People actually really want me to do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually, yeah. yeah. It was actually pretty easy in the end. Yeah. And any any um, joke highlights? Uh, well, a lot of it was, well, the thing is, it was personal stories about my sister in front of a crowd. So it was like the nichest, it was just doing observational yeah, yeah. material. About yeah. my sister in front of people who all know stuff, so it's it was yeah, all just it is a dream gig, actually. niche yeah, in yeah. jokes. Yeah, um, you know, I talked about my sister's crabby claws. 
uh, which is I think now been looked back on as a, a form of stimming because um, because she's my only sister I have nothing to compare it to and are I you thought trying to bring the material now to the wider audience no I was trying to explain you were telling me I was, you asked me for one yeah, of no, the jokes please, go um, and it, I guess it's not a joke it's just a ridiculous thing she does when she used to get excited yeah. she used to do something called crabby claws right Right. where she would go uh, this high pitched squeal yeah. her eyes would cross, go cross eyed and she'd start going like this <laughs> Right, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And I, I just thought that was how women dealt with stress. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, it took me a while just to realize how fucking mad it was. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it is. It was. That is what stimming is. Is that what I don't want to get back into stimming? Um, and then the next day, uh, my my dad did the speech. He was he was nervous as well. And I th basically everyone was very excited for my dad's speech because it could have been absolutely ballistic. Right. He. Yeah. He could often not read a room. No, um, really. Yes. Uh, and to be honest, I think because he was quite concerned about fucking up, he mm. actually played it quite safe. Did quite he go tame. for the middle, the middle ground? He went for the middle ground. He if played I was it, there, it, I would have been, would I have been disappointed? You would have been a bit disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I would uh, have no, been... There was a couple of highlights. Because, yeah, there's a couple of highlights. I mean, he, I would have been so excited for He said I was speech as being written by chat GBT or like yeah, yeah, yeah. how do you structure a perfect wedding speech chat GBT and they use that as a structuring thing yeah. but he never said chat GBT once <laughs> yeah. he said Jack Chi Jing Ping <laughs> Jack Jam Bing Chong like he just couldn't say and he kept going back and he yeah, never got yeah. it what, what, right once um, was there confusion as to what was going on was it did people get that it was chat GPT yes, or what did I think they, they think did. Xi Jinping I think wrote it his just, speech I don't think anyone thought Xi Jinping wrote his, his I speech I think that's fair to say uh, he did a quote from Warren Buffett um, about relationships sincerely sort of good um, it was the his his advice for a long marriage is uh, low expectations yeah and then he was saying that Will fucked up pretty much our, high our expectations. kind of exactly. our tagline um, it was very good it was in this old country estate right and I guess this is quite a me thing to do but I, I obviously went on the Wikipedia of the estate of course right? of course and well, you got, if you're in an old country estate <coughs> did you, you got did you mouth it before? getting emotional about the country yeah. <laughs> yeah, You'd be talking about your sister's wedding for the whole time, but as soon as you start talking about architecture in the countryside. Um, and I found some interesting things. The main thing was that apparently on the ground, mm. it had the best diversity slash geographical scientific interest quality of lichen. <laughs> You know what lichen is? It's, it's, it's basically moss on a rock, tennis right? Tennis player. Moss on a rock. Oh, yeah. That's pretty, I suppose. And for people who know about stuff, it's important <laughs> stuff. Is that that's where is that your take on that? For people that know about stuff, it's important stuff. Yeah, well, people always talk about, like... Is it important a, a lot biodiversity? Of it, yeah, something like that. Did you find much lichen? I found a great... There was lots of great lichen, but no one at the wedding was as interested in looking for lichen as yeah, me. Yeah, they were interested in, in the two people getting married. <laughs> But I guess I, I realized that's what I realized like, about myself is like, yeah, if I have no interest in liking, right? But if it's but someone's it's, told it's me, said not only is it the best spot in Europe, well, it's one of the best in the world, right? For, yeah. And if if anything's the best in the world, then that's going to be there. my personality for the time I'm there, right? Yeah, I suppose. When, so how when uh, in Rome? Did you bring liking up in your speech? I didn't bring it up in my speech because I only found out about liking after my speech. But Heartbreak. it was a, it, the last two days were very liking heavy. I was I was really like yeah. I, I thought people would be more interested in liking because it's like the thing is when like, I'm not a liking guy. But if you're in the best liking place in the world, get into liking. It's kind would, of my I, view. I would, would you get into liking if you're in the best liking place in the world? Depends. <laughs> if I was there for my sister's wedding, no. And yeah. I, it's not that because I'm going to be caught up in the moment for three days. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not. You're going to have some downtime. Like, oh You're going to have some liking time. I am, but like the majority, like weddings, there's food, there's booze, there's people to talk to, there's dancing, there's music. <laughs> I think I'm going to take all of those above liking, if I'm honest. I don't. But think... it's the best liking in the world. When are you ever going to have that? <laughs> but you have no liking to compare it to. It's true. It fell on deaf yeah, ears. It's true. It's true. Blind and, eyes. And, I, and it, maybe you're. Regret not knowing more about Lycan because I thought, you know what, if mm. I knew more, maybe I could I'd really appreciate, appreciate this even more. <laughs> Were you just staring at Lycan being like, nothing? It's not, we're not well, I was again. more trying to log. You fucking maniac. I was trying to log the, the Lycan in my head so that maybe later I'll learn about Lycan. Yeah, and, I'll and be then like, you'll be like, well. <laughs> well, more I can go back to the old wank bang. <laughs> yeah. It's a false memory. It's a false Lycan memory. The, the groom lost his ring immediately when he went in the sea the next day. Immediately. Oh my God. Um, 
And did you find it? The attitude that my sister had had, which I think is a great attitude as well, maybe a life lesson we could bring into the BGW manifesto, all the 15 commandments, right? We've got one thus far. <laughs> Low expectations. Which was that for something like this, she was like, I'm not going to let anything stop me having a great time. Yeah. Right. And I think that for, if you have something like a birthday or a wedding, yeah, it's actually because yeah, yeah. there was a lot of things that did go wrong and just. But they're going to go wrong. If you're like they? committed yeah. that you're going to have a good time stubbornly. Yeah. 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 That is. Agreed. And it meant that it kind of kept the whole. Because things are gonna thing go going to go wrong. It's impossible for things not to go wrong over three days. You know, days. it rained for basically the whole three days and did it was just. Yeah. Um, but we were swimming in the sea and. Uh, because of how cold it was, Will's finger shrunk up. and he dropped the ring. And that, that was quite an intense time because it was, was like... Was everyone splashing about? Well, everyone was like, okay, we've got this attitude of no matter what, we're going to have a great time. But that is kind of truly heartbreaking. Groom lost ring is, it's, is pretty um, bad. It was a fa family heirloom. Yeah, you know. did, did you find it? Well, we looked for 40 minutes. Everyone was In taking... In the sea? Well, it was... Yeah, so everyone was putting goggles on, just taking turns going down. Luckily... You know, the groom's family, who are quite a practical bunch, yeah. and they're very into scuba diving and stuff. Well, that's, they that's had, a miracle, to be honest with <laughs> they that. They didn't point. have scuba diving gear. They had goggles, but they they, they know their way on, around a seabed. Is sea that going to move with the tide or sink to the floor? Luckily, there wasn't much of a current. Sure. Um, but you couldn't feel around. You had to look at the bottom. <laughs> well, not like that. <laughs> You're, creep. You're crab clawing. <laughs> uh, and then his brother... Yeah, half an hour of looking found yeah, it. And that's it was, huge. It was, I would it was have loved really... to have been there for that moment because I would have done everything in my power to find it. I would have passed out <laughs> holding my breath because I can't think of anything better than going. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty it was a pretty magical Shit. moment. But they found it. Well, that's good. They found it. Yeah, which I, it, it, I still think it was extraordinary amount Crap. of luck, even though they were good at looking for that sort of thing. I think that well, like, it's definitely gone. Off. Yeah, it was definitely gone in my you head. Were. You, were, you were too busy looking at the lichen. <laughs> guy. Forget the ring. Look at this. There's a slightly rare plant over here. Right. You'll all have seen, I've, you know, you see it on um, TikTok, I guess. Yeah. Little clips of, of fat people eating lots of food. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's called mukbanging, yeah. especially in South Korea. A video, yeah. especially one that is live streamed, that features a person eating a large quantity of food and addressing the audience. She is eat, in a <laughs> sentence, she is eating two pounds of lobster in this mukbang. Yeah. So that's what mukbang is. You'll all have seen yeah. the videos. There's just there's sort of like a green screen behind yeah. it, and they just eat crazy amounts of food. People have died from it. Yep. Um, and she wants they deserve it. Yep. Um, but there was this the, a famous mukbanger, Nicocado Avocado. It's a good name. Three. It's a good <clears> name. Um, so he's a famous mukbanger, and mm. he's fat like this picture that's coming up on the screen <laughs> now. Um, and you'd expect a mukbanger to be over, overweight, right? He's almost hoped so. No, you don't want him to, you know. There's, so, there's some very skinny mukbangers. Anyway. Yeah. Pointless. But anyway, so he was fat. He's fat. And there was this whole thing. <laughs> there's this whole thing because he's, you know, he's eating, he's eating pounds of pork on videos yeah. every day. So what he did, which I'm not saying isn't interesting, kind of, but I think it doesn't, it's not doing, <laughs> look at it. It's just obscene. Um, it's not doing what he thinks he's doing. So he's, he obviously gets loads of shit in the comments. You know, what? big old piece of fat. So <laughs> stop eating so much. Comments you're going to burst. <laughs> Comments are turned off. Brilliant. I see why. I see why. Yeah. You know, and that's just pulling out from my head. He's going to obviously a lot of online hate, you know, but then again, I'm not sure how much online positivity these mukbangers should really get. But yeah, so then he's, he's been posting regularly. He's been posting for regularly for weeks or stuff. Yeah. I've dived into this story. I wasn't like, I'm not like a Nicoado avocado fan mm. and haven't been following the story for long. But he posted a video mm. like last week doing like this. It was kind of cool, the reveal kind yeah. of thing. But then he was just skinny. He'd lost all the weight. And he was saying how this is, he's, what he'd done is he'd recorded two years. He'd been posting con older content for like two years whilst he lost the weight ready for this big reveal. Oh. And then he was like, this is the greatest social experiment of all time. And like, he's like, I'm the villain. And I was a bit like, well, you just didn't show us you, like you're, you're posting stuff on the internet. I, I, maybe there's a certain thing about the truth on the internet, perhaps. But it's also like, well, you've just like, <laughs> that's what he was like. But he's like, I, but, um, I got away with it. I am now not all, fat anymore. But all he did was just like back, <laughs> back date videos yeah. and then got skinny. And then he was like, this it's is like the greatest social. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then we just get really fat. But, I don't know. I, people are. I guess it's it's a kind of interesting thing to do, I suppose. But he was, 
He's been saying that he's the, like the truth was in front of you the entire time. No, it wasn't. It wasn't in front of it us. It wasn't. You've you've deceived people, yeah. and then you're like, "Haha, I wasn't fat. I was actually getting skinny." It was like, why would anyone presume you were getting skinny when you're posting posting videos of you being fat? So does he see it as a great clap back to the people yeah. calling him a big old yeah? A but big it was old like, yeah, but, but now well, they're I not going to. But yeah, but. Do you know what I mean? I don't see I, why it's such a big yeah, reveal. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit of a It's a cool reveal. It's a little bit of a pwn, right? You know? Is it? To be, you know, you're, you're a fucking Look, fat I, piece I, of shit. I don't oh, agree. I'm like, what bang? <laughs> What about now? <laughs> yeah, but, but look, I don't, I don't condone any kind of internet hate whatsoever, right? No. But the people that are calling him fat will be like, yeah, well, you were fat when I called you fat. <laughs> now, I was talking about old you. I'm talking about when you were fat. You're skinny now, cool. I won't call you fat anymore. What's your point? I didn't know. Why was I supposed to know that you were just <laughs> pretending to be fat for two years? How am I meant to know that? Yeah. I called you fat because you were fat. You're not yeah. fat anymore. Yeah. In a way, they've won. They could be like, good. It's Would you say the perfect crime? I think the perfect crime. <laughs> <laughs> I think the perfect crime. I just don't. I've been trying to work out what his point is because he calls it a social experiment. Yeah. The thing, I guess you could say, you know, don't. not everything on the internet's true. I was like, sure. Mm. Well, he's got a Patreon as well for like exclusive content. And I feel he's posting two hour mukbangs and I just don't know who... You know, we have Patreon content here for more of this, I guess. But I don't know who's two hours through him <laughs> and being like, like... I need another hour of this. <laughs> He's going to do Chick-fil-A next. <laughs> Who fucking cares? Well, BB watches a lot of mukbang. What? I guess she doesn't watch proper mukbang. She she likes the more kind of devastating emotional stuff. So there's TikTok. There's girls who basically stuff from binge eating. And I think BB has a warped fascination with binge eating. You know? God, this is dark, though. Yeah, it's not light. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a pun about weight um, <laughs> and it, it's more like kind of girls who are binge eating for some reason filming it kind of in tears mud banging I guess a bit, it's, it's straight to TikTok so they'll, and they'll hold up to the camera or like what I eat in a day that's what she loves the kind of the gro car it's gro crash it's fascination it's of like out. someone yeah where it's just loads of girls showing and then I eat this then I eat this and then they feel awful and if they I'm hate honest, it. Yeah. look, as I said, I, I'm going to have to say it again. I don't condone any kind of internet yeah. hate. But this kind of shit I get. I get why you'd get hate. Because what are they, what's going on? They're killing themselves mm. for no for no real creative purpose. Well, I think you can get they're quite making a bit the of money. You can make worse. a lot of money. Sure, but they're making the internet worse whilst killing themselves. I think that's the, the only fair place where you can be like, stop doing this. This is a bad idea. Yeah, but I guess I I guess you like movie stars who who smoke cigarettes. <laughs> I don't like movie stars who do TikToks about how many cigarettes they smoke in a day. It's very different. It doesn't make any sense. And at least movie stars act in films. Answer me that. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> I don't I don't understand it, and I that's the one part of the internet where I'm well, you know I'm sure there's, there's, far, there's, there's far more. But that's one where I'm like, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of get it. I think people might actually be looking out for someone in there. Be like, you've got to stop doing this. You're going to kill yourself. People have died from it. Yeah. 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 But I do, I would just chuck mukbang on a pile with loads of other shit. Yeah. Like? Bronies. What's that? So I watched an hour and 45 explainer video by this kind of very smart girl. What's her fucking? Bronies, Juliet Nicholson. Yes, her. So it's an oh. hour and 10 minutes. Do you know her? That Did girl. she get in controversy? Well, I don't know. She's very smart, but she does like deep dives where she explains internet subcultures with a way that very few people have that much knowledge, basically. Is, she, like, in, is she a pony girl? Is this she's an e-girl, but she's for this episode, she's talking about her time as a, being in the brony community. Well, so is a bro what's a brony? A, so a brony is an adult. People. Uh, no, an adult fan of the cartoon My Little Pony. Right, and she yeah, tracks the whole okay. history, and it is yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it kind of like started in 2010 and basically fizzled out in 2020. And it was about for 10 years there was a real, truly internet subculture that is so of this time it couldn't happen any anywhere else. Yeah, um, and it's basically ironically on 4chan people would post yeah, yeah. memes about My Little Pony and slowly that irony Wore melted off, away yeah. and it became and as those people got older and older yeah. it became and then it got infused with a lot of sexual stuff as well and suddenly yeah. 
these huge at BronyCon, they'd have these huge. Yeah, they've done an episode event. of that on like Bob's Burgers. Is about the only, bronies? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I don't think they mentioned it specifically, but it was horse people. It's absolutely fascinating, and there's a lot. What's interesting as well is these older guys. <laughs> No, they're watching a, uh, a cartoon made for little girls, right? But there's a lot of sexism in Brody community. Like they don't really view <laughs> they don't really view female fans as like real. Like oh, the men are in charge, even in this. The, it's mainly men. Oh god, it's mainly men. Even and they kind of like talk down to women as yeah, not really know what they're really talking about. Be true Bronies. Yeah, they don't really get it. You know, <laughs> men, men are the fucking the fucking worst. There's a that lot of homophobia because there's a big. There's a homo there's homophobia yeah, yeah, ramp in yeah, the brony but, community. Yeah, because the bronies are really there's a real insecurity that people might think that they're gay because they watch I wonder a, why a, a girls child was dressed cartoon. up as a magical horse. <laughs> it's so specific. Look, this is at the end of Brony Comedy, it's just all fucking autistic older dudes. Um, well, this part of the essay is called Gay oh, Gay Bronies. Oh yeah. right, so there is a thing. Oh, do you watch And there's this? music, there's brony, there's brony and they play huge, live gigs at brony cons and people lose their mind they're all singing the words is it like an oasis gig what is going <laughs> it's on it's fucking crazy i don't under I, yeah and the, but it they had, a, had a real sexual element so the, at brony con there's all these stalls where people are selling like brony memorabilia or like just, just stuff you know it had this whole economy around it nearly everyone was selling brony like girlfriend pillows so it's kind of like it would be like a, a brony with tits and ass as a giant pillow. So I don't like this. So it's like a, it's like a My Little Pony pillow to be humped by an older man. Now, in all, in all honesty, in all honesty, do, do we think that anyone of a sound mind can be a brony? So she talks about... And that's about, a genuine question. There was, um, she has quite an interesting view on it where it is like a, it, it's it's very human things. It's looking for. I'm focusing on the darker side of it because it's funnier. But there's, a, it's a sense of community. It's a sense of purpose. My Little Pony. Yeah. All friend of My Little Pony. There's plenty of places to find community and purpose. And well, there, for a lot of people, there aren't. And yes, there's a high amount of neurodivergence. Sure. There's, you know, um, and it's yeah, it's for people who are very lonely who find yeah. a way to come together. I guess and I mean, there is quite. Your... There, I think I found a lot of it quite. It's, it was a bit. There's a lot of them, so there's going to be darker sides to it. But mm. I did find it quite. It, it touched on all the I guess basic a lot of them human are lonely, things. They go on the internet, they end up they on 4chan, find... and then they end up. I reckon, like the thing is, it doesn't. They won't start with a. I really like this My Little Pony cartoon. I wonder if there's other people who like it. It will be like, oh, that's a community that seems to have people like me yes. in there. So I'm going to get yeah. into My Little Pony, yeah. and then that the horse stuff seems to be a little bit irrelevant. Weirdly, yeah, yeah. it's just about you know having your own thing, having your own language. Feeling safe, in your no. community. And th so there was a documentary made about it, and she clapped back at that documentary because it basically just ha was very patronising about the more yeah. autistic people who you know need something to do when it's actually there's more a than deeper that. side to it. I'm sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, a lot of it is guys, and then I imagine there's there, there there's a there's a couple of pedos in there. I'm sure. You know? Horse pedos. Um, but no. when I first properly learned about mukbang was when I watched the Netflix show which is just out now called The Influencer and you'll love it it's basically like Physical 100 right is it it's reality Korean, it's a Korean reality game show I'm in yeah 77 elite influencers flaunt their skills to, strate to, to strategically draw the attention in the high stakes social survival game so it's ah. they, they get all different types of influencers anyone who's got like an internet presence or yeah. followers and, and crown they, the ultimate one yeah and then what you get the knocked out some? yeah I saw the first episode what the, te what the test like so the first test was um, to get likes and dislikes right and ah oh, this is quite fun and then I don't want to. I can ruin the first one. You can. You, you yeah. can ruin this for me. Yeah. Where and it, it, they all thought it was to get the most likes, so yeah. they're all talking to each other, trying to negotiate likes. I'm going to get a like here. Uh, oh, but and you, then one so of hold on, hold on. It's only the people in the room. It's not open to the public. No, this is yeah. This is within within the room. Yeah. So it's a popularity contest, and everyone around their neck has how many followers they've got. Right. Uh, so there's some people with 11 million followers. There's some people with. To be honest, we have 200,000 on TikTok. There's a lot of people on TikTok who are like 40,000. So we could We be, could have been on the, the... If we were Korean, we could have been what, eligible for the Get the engine influence. on season two. <laughs> well, not understanding a word they're saying. Just being like... What? What? We don't. <laughs> sharing a thing as well. We're like... But then one of them cracked during the middle of it that it wasn't just about getting likes. It was about getting both because it's about both. attention. All press both. is good press. Both likes and dislikes. They're all try trying to go for likes. First lesson. But, 
But uh, d- yeah, so it was a very like first lesson. And one of them went up there no, and made a complete as top press. fool of himself and on went, like a stone. And then he was like, "Wow!" Oh, so it's like that Black Mirror. Episode. What did that teach us? What did we learn? What did we learn? Everything that, and nothing at the same time. Well, it, is it? Isn't it? I guess because of social media, we're in a sort of like an attention economy, where it's all it's all about attention. I mean, if we got off our phones more. If we lose and just our, looked into the forest and find like in the further more. we remove ourselves from ourselves, yeah. the distance will become greater to the true sense and reality of our world. Yeah, that's and, all we got time for. Yeah, that, that was is. a perfect wrap up. Sorry, you shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Fuck you. Bye. <laughs>